filled with warmth and love. In this family, there is a mother who possesses the skills of a master chef. She is beautiful on the outside, but she shines even brighter on the inside. The father, a true jack of all trades, he can build and repair anything at home. Though he may look tough on the exterior, but just like the home he built, he is warm and humble on the inside. In this family, there are two older sisters, both of which are very smart and charming in their own unique way. And now, strong and amazing mothers themselves. Lastly, the youngest member in this family, the little brother, who often viewed himself as a burden, a weak person, someone unworthy of such a remarkable family. He couldn't even bear to look at himself in the mirror without judging himself. Now please open your eyes. I am that little brother in this family. I had asked you to close your eyes because I wanted to witness all of you opening your eyes simultaneously, knowing that the first thing you will likely see was me. Growing up, the scariest thing to me in the world was to be noticed and seen by other people. I wanted to be invisible. In high school, I would put on a hat, pull it over my face, walk around the hallways with hunched shoulders, wear oversized clothing as if it were a protective shield. This kind of behavior stemmed from my struggles with allergies, asthma, and eczema. I remember going to the doctor once. They referred to this as the big three. Now these conditions prevented me from participating in sports. I couldn't even sit still for more than a few minutes without wanting to scratch. I was afraid of asking someone out on a date and I even withdrew from hanging out with my friends. I would run home after school, close my room door, and lay in my bed. As I approached senior year in high school, a quiet dream of mine began to take shape from within me. A dream of becoming an airline pilot. It required a great deal of self-belief, and I mustered enough courage to tell my parents my aspirations to study aviation. They were pleasantly surprised but of course, they supported me and encouraged me as I embarked on this journey. Three years into my program, I decided piloting wasn't the path meant for me. It was a difficult decision, but I left the program and I finished my BBA and I majored in marketing. After graduating, I seized the opportunity to move to Hong Kong to work at a marketing agency. For five years, I immersed myself in this field, but deep down, I felt empty. I knew I wasn't working towards something truly meaningful. So what did I do? I decided to leave, return home to Vancouver to spend time with family and friends. When I got to Vancouver, a few friends and I decided to travel. We went to Brazil. Why did we go to Brazil? Because at the time, we had two very close friends of ours living in Brazil for five years. We had no idea what they were doing over there. So we decided to go and see for ourselves. 
Little did I know that this journey to Brazil would bring about a profound shift in my life. Every morning, we would wake up at 6 a.m. to meditate. Then after breakfast, we would dedicate three to four hours of our time to volunteer and do various work. We would chop wood up to help build a home. We would tend to the gardens where they grew their own vegetables. We would clean and scrub the kitchen floors and counters, and we would even travel to nearby communities to lend a helping hand. Throughout my time in Brazil, my skin and my allergies reacted in the way I had anticipated. Poorly. I found myself constantly itching, making it difficult for me to be engaged and to be present. This discomfort consumed my thoughts, leaving me preoccupied with how I looked and felt. And as the weeks went by, my situation worsened, and I reached a breaking point one night, laying in bed. I was breaking down. I was collapsing, trembling. Tears streamed down over my face. Open wounds all over my body from relentless scratching. I lost control, both emotionally and physically. I wanted to yell. I wanted to scream. But I didn't. Because I didn't want to wake up my friends who were sleeping next door. I didn't want to be a burden. And I didn't want the attention. In my mind, I was yelling, why are you doing this to me? Why are you punishing me? I am a good person. I don't deserve to be treated this way. And in the midst of my breakdown, I had a sudden revelation, an epiphany. It dawned on me that for my entire life leading up to that point, I viewed myself as a victim. I had confined myself within a box, alongside my self-defeating thoughts, and I sealed the lid shut. I truly believed that I could be more than nothing. I could be nothing more than unlikable and unworthy. But in that moment of realization, I understood the reason why I felt powerless and insecure. I had wholeheartedly embraced the story that I created for myself. It was as if I produced a movie, playing a minor role, feeling like an outcast in my own life. I told myself, starting that morning, I would love myself more. I would try to be more present and be more engaged. I would even stop when I saw a mirror and appreciate the reflection staring back at me. This shift in mindset changed the way I experienced the remainder of my trip. During this time, one of the residents had shared yoga philosophy to me and how it changed her life. Her story was so inspiring that I decided to practice yoga on a regular basis. I meditated, I practiced breath work and yoga postures every day. Then I went to Thailand and India to do my first two yoga trainings. Then eventually I moved to Taiwan to become a full-time yoga teacher. And now I am teaching yoga, or I have been teaching yoga in Shanghai for the past six years, where 
my mother's side is from. The greatest journey you can embark upon is the exploration of your own mind. Only then can you truly understand the world around you. Socrates. I love this quote. It truly encapsulates how I approach my life today. For the longest time, I held the belief that my thoughts defined my identity. That if a thought had emerged in my mind, I must have created it. And therefore, it must be true. Particularly when it came to how I perceived myself. However, I came to realize that this perspective wasn't entirely accurate. Our thoughts are not a direct representation and reflection of who we are. They are transient and ever-changing. Our minds continuously churn out thoughts that are either positive, negative, or neutral. It is important to recognize that your thoughts are not facts. They can be influenced by your emotions, biases, and conditioning. In understanding this, we gain the power to question and examine our thoughts more critically. The tool that has helped me gain a deeper understanding of my mind is mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness meditation has helped me to recognize when I am being distracted, when I am no longer present, and when old thought patterns arise. I am learning to pay more attention to not only my thoughts, but also bodily sensations, my surrounding environment, without judgment, and from an observer point of view. So for, the next, for this next part, I want to try leading you in a guided meditation. Let's cross our arms and place your hands on your ribs. Close your eyes. Relax your shoulders and soften your face. And begin to take notice of where you feel your breath. Notice the subtle movements in your body every time you take your breath in and breath out. Feel the breath. Follow the breath from start to finish. And start again. Use the breath as an anchor to stay grounded, to be present. because the breath can only happen in the present moment. Now imagine that your mind represents the sky, and your thoughts represent the clouds. You are sitting on top of a mountain, overseeing everything. When you see and recognize that there's an idea in your mind, a thought, a cloud, instead of asking more questions and losing yourself in thought, recognize that it's there, be aware of it, and let it go. Let it flow by. The 
wonderful thing about meditation is the ability to start again. It's really not about how long you can sit still with your eyes closed with an empty mind. It's about recognizing when you are lost in thought, when you are being distracted from this very moment. It truly is a skill. Just like learning a new language and a sport. It takes consistent practice. As you are noticing your breath, you'll also notice other things. Like the sound of my voice. The temperature in this room. The clothes on your back. And the weight of your body. You are noticing all of these things as an observer. Take a conscious breath and slowly open your eyes. Learning to become a witness of the mind brings about distance and clarity, enabling us to see the bigger picture and consider alternative viewpoints. This perspective can create space for new insights, helping you to understand the true intentions behind your thoughts, behaviors, and actions. It can help you foster curiosity and self-reflection. And it can also remind you to check in on yourself on a regular basis with compassion and forgiveness. Living mindfully will change the way you experience the world around you because the world within you has transformed. Thank you. <laughs>